Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Richard Frankie, N6NCW, and he has to move an antenna, and it's an R7. An R7 is a Cushcraft antenna. I'll show you the QST ad for it. In the beginning of every issue of QST, there's uh, this page here where it shows Cushcraft antennas. And the, uh, these are the R9, okay, the R8, which covers 40 through 6, and the R7, which uh, is, I'm not sure if it's 30 through 6 or 20 through 6. 20 through 6, I thought, was the R5. I used to have one. Wonderful antenna. This is the type of antenna that does not need radials, okay? So uh, let's take a look at, at what he's got here. He says, your videos have certainly enhanced my ham radio experience. Thank you. Here's my question. I currently have an R7 vertical, which I'm replacing, on the roof of my house, but recently acquired solar panels, and they put off quite a bit of RFI. You need to buy a bunch of these. These are little ferrite uh, bead things. Uh, you can get them in a variety of sizes. They're cheap on Amazon. Put these around the wires going into each solar panel. There's usually a serial loop. Put them on each of them and so on. Uh, because what happens in those solar panels is a lot of the ones put on the house for a battery list system have built-in inverters and sometimes those built-in inverters are really junk when it comes out to generating a sine wave. So if you put a ferrite bead around each one, and even if you have a hundred of them, it's not going to cost you that much. You know, a few hundred dollars. <laughs> if you can afford a roof full of solar panels, you can afford those and you want those. Okay. And you also want to talk to your solar installer, have him help you. Okay, so he wants to move this uh, recently acquired solar panels. I've placed a number of Palomar engineering ferrites around the panels. My rig and the antenna, but unfortunately the noise level is still quite high. Okay, so that's what I just told him to do. Um, make sure they're grounded. Uh, they, they're in aluminum cases and they're on aluminum struts that are on your roof. Ground those, aluminum. Um, you're going to use copper or tinned to hook to the aluminum, so you're going to want to use stainless steel bolts. And, and let me show you something. Um, here's a strut, okay, and you're going to put a bolt through, and this is going to be a stainless steel bolt. And here's the panel, okay. Not the solar panel, but the uh, uh, strut. Put a washer here that is aluminum put your copper wire here put another washer you'll put a lock washer over here and a nut in a and this will come all the way in of course the idea is that the copper never touches the aluminum because if the copper touches the aluminum you'll get corrosion there. Stainless steel is not perfect for this, as many people have reminded me, but it's as close to perfect as we can come with reasonably priced uh, pieces or nuts and bolts and stuff like that. Uh, these stainless steel is available from Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, you can also go to Fastenal. That's fast. Fastenal, it might have an extra L there, fasten all, um, and you could buy them in bulk if you want. Okay, so uh, anyway, grounding those things could help to give them their own ground rod and then uh, bond that ground rod to your station ground rod and your utility ground rod and any other ground rods you've got, okay? Uh, let's see, noise level is quite high. I need to move the antenna away from the house 
and the only other place for the vertical will be on the downslope portion of my property, which is southeast facing. Okay, so here's a downslope. I don't know how. Let's just draw this as a downslope. And this is, what is it, southwest facing? Um, southeast. Okay, if you put an antenna up here, most of the radiation is going to go this way. And, and back to the sides and so on. But you will tend to cut the radiation going backwards. Okay. And yes, getting it away from the house is a good idea. Now, um, wants to be able to fully extend the radials. Well, the thing doesn't have radials, but it does have a counterpoise. And it's not very big. And for an R7, you don't need radials. It, this is a halfway vent fed antenna that's got a counterpoise already built in for it to work. Okay, the coax line to the antenna would be approximately 125 feet to the station. I would uh, recommend for something that long on the uh, bands like uh, 15, 12, and 10 meters, you might want to do an LMR 400 or RG213 or RG8, the old style RG8. Uh, RG8X can work, um, but on the, those higher bands, 15, you know, 17, 15, and so on, uh, you're going to start seeing some attenuation in there. Okay. Uh, does this plan make sense? Absolutely. My replacement antenna is probably a DX Commander with full radials, which is fine. I've tested the DX Commander and it works uh, fine, and it does need radials. And I would suggest that you, um, um, you know, make it, it, one thing they tell you in the book there is that more shorter radial better, uh, more short radials is better than fewer long radials. So find something in their instructions the right length. Some of the early instructions for the DX Commander are truly awful, uh, but the latest instructions seem to be pretty good. Uh, it sounds like you've got some experience at a ham, so you know what uh, the various uh, terminology means and so on, and you shouldn't have too much trouble uh, putting the thing together. I would point out that in addition to the written instructions, there are several videos available on the uh, the DS Commander website that are worth watching as you dive into that project. I would suggest not stringing out doing that project over a long time, but focusing on it for a day or so and getting that thing put together. Okay? Um, and if you put the DX Commander, now your R7 is going to work fine there too. Uh, the DX Commander will give you 40 for sure, which is nice to have. Or he says, am I better off keeping a transmit antenna where it's currently located and instead look in the hillside for receive on the antenna? The problem is that the antennas will have different patterns. And so your transmit antenna, which will transmit pretty much unidirectionally, will people will hear your CQ, but you won't be able to hear their response to it. So I, just given the idea of reciprocity of an antenna working the same general direction as it receives, uh, I'd go with the one antenna. If you still have that R7 on the roof, keep that uh, wire going into your shack and, and uh, you can give it a shot and see if it does work better that way. I assume you've got a radio where you can hook up a separate receive antenna. Okay, so um, yes, you can do this. My station is located in the hills of Los Angeles at about 1,200 feet elevation, and I primarily work 15 and 20 with a bit of 40 meters from time to time. Okay, let me do something then, now that we've read that part. Here's your hill in Los Angeles, okay. Um, the hills around L.A. are quite steep. I used to live, I was, uh, grew up in Glendale and then went to high school in La Crescenta. 
So I'm very familiar with uh, the hills around there. They can be very steep. Uh, that being the case, boy, I'd try, try to get that antenna as high up as you can. If you happen to be lucky enough to live at the crest of the hill, um, you will want to use the height and move maybe laterally rather than longitudinally. I also know that the lots in the hills up there are not big. Uh, they've crammed an awful lot of people on the Hollywood Hills and places like that. Uh, in fact, the Hollywood Hills are completely covered with houses, even though they're very steep in places. Um, I grew up there, so <laughs> I know that. Uh, enjoy the Mediterranean climate in Los Angeles. Uh, the, the light is a different color there. It's not the bright white light we're used to here in Colorado. It's bright white, but somehow it's different. I can tell when I'm in, uh, on the California coast. Okay, so I hope that helps a little bit, tells you a little bit about what uh, kinds of things can be going on and so on. And um, so to all of you, if you would like to contribute, or not contribute, scratch that, to all of you out there who'd like to support this channel financially, go to dkessler.com slash support. And uh, you can uh, throw some money in the tip jar on PayPal, do a recurring uh, tip jar, or use Patreon. YouTube uses um, engagement as a major measure of a channel's worth. And so please click like, uh, share, um, comment, things like that. And until we next meet, 73.